Hello and welcome to the Hydrometallurgy Lab at the University of Queensland in Australia. My name is John and in this video I'll be showing you a lab demonstration of a zinc electro winning prac from aqueous zinc sulfate solution. To start, we first prepare our zinc sulfate solution. I have a pre-weighed amount of zinc here, which I add to an already acidified solution. Our target concentrations are 150 gram per litre sulfuric acid and 60 gram per litre zinc as zinc sulfate. While that's dissolving, let's consider our cell design. We will be plating the zinc onto an aluminium cathode by supplying electrons from a lead anode. So, let's measure the weight of our cathode. This is roughly 156.1 grams. Let's also measure the length of the base of our cathode. We need this in order to calculate how much current we need to run through the cell at our specific current density. I've measured this as roughly 10.7 centimeters. Let's go over to our actual experimental setup. As we're working with an electrolytic cell, external power needs to be supplied by a battery, or in this case, a potentiostat. These are widely used in electrochemistry experiments as they can run in either current or potential control and it also reads the total cell voltage. As you can see, we've connected the anode to where the electrons are coming from, or the positive end, and the cathode is where the electrons are going, or the negative end. So it's been some time and the electrolyte solution has finished dissolving, so now we're going to transfer it into the cell. Our cathode and anode are held in place with pegs with only one exposed surface to the solution. The other sides are covered with insulating tape. So now we measure the height of the surface exposed to solution in order to calculate area. I think the height's about 8.4 centimeters. At the same time, we're going to measure the distance between the cathode and the anode. This is important in calculating the electrolyte resistance later on. I think it's about 3.4 centimeters. Also, as safety is always a top priority in the lab, we don't forget to have a bund underneath the experiment. Now we just do a simple calculation to find the total exposed surface area. Our chosen current density is 500 amps per square meter. This gives us a target amperage of 4.49. So we turn on the potentiostat and turn it to the correct amperage. We know something's happening due to the evolution of gas at the cathode. This is hydrogen gas produced from an undesired secondary reaction. You may have noticed that the potentiostat is giving us a voltage reading of about 4.1, 4.2 volts. This is known as the total cell potential. If we want to break this down into the anode potential and cathode potential, we use what's called a voltmeter connected to a silver silver chloride reference electrode. For now, let's just do the anode readings. We take one close to the anode while connected to the anode, giving us about 2 volts, and one far away near the cathode while still connected to the anode, about 2.2 volts. We repeat the same process while the voltmeter is connected to the cathode. One measurement near the cathode, giving negative 1.2 volts. And again one further away near the anode, giving about negative 1.5 volts. In this close-up we can see that the hydrogen gas at the cathode has pretty much stopped. We're now mainly plating zinc. We're now getting oxygen gas at the anode. This oxidation reaction produces the electrons needed by the zinc ions. 
Now I've recorded the first 15 minutes of the experiment, but unfortunately my movie editing software can't fast forward through the footage, so I'll probably just show one minute of footage so you can get a rough idea of what's happening. You may have noticed that the solution has gone a pinkish purpley colour, and that's okay. This coloration is due to manganese impurities in the initial zinc solution, which has produced the permanganate ion. If we used, for example, a 99.9% .9 zinc source, our solution would be expected to remain clear at this point, or have gone slightly grey. Again, we'll be taking our voltmeter readings every 10 minutes up until the total experimental time of 2 hours. So it's been 1 hour and 50 minutes since we began the experiment, and unfortunately, again, I can't fast forward through the final 10 minutes of footage, so I'll just show the last minute. Now that the total experimental time has been reached, we'll shut down the potentiostat and remove the cathode in order to wash it with water and dry it. We'll be leaving the cathode overnight in order for it to air dry and come back tomorrow to see how it's gone. Alright, so it's the following day now and we have our cathode pretty evenly plated with zinc. You can take some notes on the morphology of the final deposit. So now we're going to measure the final mass of the cathode. And although it doesn't look like much, the cathode now weighs 165.1 grams, meaning that we've plated about 9 grams of zinc. We can combine all of our measured data into what's called an Edel Energy Diagram. This diagram shows the total energy consumption as a sum of the individual components. We can also calculate some key parameters, such as the specific energy consumption, which is kilowatt hours of energy consumed per kilogram of metal, and the current efficiency, which is the experimental mass produced as a function of the theoretical maximum. Perhaps you'd like to give it a go for the values that we've used in this video. Thanks so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you've found this video informative and useful in your studies.